Okay, thank you, Inaki. Thank you to everybody and especially to the organizer for this invitation to this nice workshop. So the the title of my talk is Artificial Electric Sense for Underwater Robotics. All this work has been done in close cooperation with Vincent Le Basta, which is who is also with us today. I will start by uh, introducing what is uh, electric sense in nature. So, in fact, electric sense is a kind of uh, sixth sense, uh, which has been evolved by several hundred species of fish named electric fish. So what do these fish to perceive their environment? They, in fact, polarize two regions of their body. One is uh, located in the tail. This is what we name the electric organ. And so they polarize, that means they set under voltage this organ uh, with respect to the rest of their body. So the, this creates two poles, uh, like in the battery, and this generates around uh, the, the fish a three-dimensional uh, electric field and also a field of uh, electric currents since water is conductive. Now, if you put an object around the fish, this perturbates uh, the, the electric field and the, the fish uh, can compare the currents crossing the skin because it, it, its skin is covered of uh, electroreceptors with and without objects. And uh, from this uh, comparison, the fish can perceive uh, its environment and especially the object, their shape, location, uh, kind of electric colors. That means the conductivity of objects and so on. So remarkably, this fish can achieve uh, quite complex cognitive tasks. For instance, they can uh, uh, recognize objects of different shape, uh, volume, and also uh, electric material. Uh, and uh, for instance, here what you can see is an experiment by University of Bonn. So a fish, uh, the, there is two rooms, and you open at a given time the, the doors, and the fish has to choose between two objects. And if it chooses the good one, it is rewarded. and uh, with this experiment, we can show that after several days, the fish can uh, learn uh, the, 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 the good objects. And so that means that they solve a very difficult inverse problem, as we will see later, in a way that uh, uh, it's not completely, not fully ex explained. Okay, so this, uh, based on this uh, remark, and this uh, performance of the fish, uh, uh, roboticists are more and more interested in using this uh, sixth sense in order to address some uh, problem uh, still unsolved in underwater robotics, and especially in confined space when there are many obstacles around the robot and in turbid waters. Even in muddy waters, as you can see here, uh, there are many muds in industry, and industrials uh, would like to have robots able to uh, explore this kind of uh, harsh uh, environment. So in these conditions, the sonar fails due to multiple echoes reflected by the uh, closed object, and vision failed due to tur turbidity. So electric sense offers nice perspectives for underwater robotics in these harsh conditions. In particular, it is omnidirectional. So it is ideally adapted to obstacle avoidance. It is very cheap and it has several modalities. Uh, that means that we can uh, use it in passive mode. That means in this case, the electric fields are generated outside the robot or in active modes, as in the case of the fish I introduced before, where the electric field is generated by the fish itself. It can be interpreted as a kind of vision where the electric images are projected onto the electric retina, uh, which is the skin of the fish. 
but it can also be interpreted as a kind of uh, haptic, since, in fact, the electric field can be seen as a kind of immaterial body around the fish, and when uh, an object approaches, the, the fish uh, feels this object like as a kind of uh, a, a touch, a pre-touch without contact. So this uh, two, di finally, this six sense electric electric field, electric sense is, is a hybrid hybrid sense between vision and haptic in this. Way. So based on these observations and motivations, uh, we develop sensor technologies uh, to study this sense. So uh, what you can see here is a typical sensor we we are using every day in our lab. It's what we name a, a slender probe. So fundamentally, it's an insulating shell uh, with this uh, axisymmetric shape, and uh, along which are arranged a set of electrodes in metal, uh, and which obey uh, a left-right symmetry. So we have the same bilateral symmetry as that observed in the fish. So the, the principle now of the, the working principle of the, of the sensor is that you have a, an, an electrode in the tail, which is the emitter, and you set it under voltage with respect to all the other electrodes, which play the role of receivers. So the voltage is generated by a wave generator. And the, for the reception, the, 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 we measure the currents that flow across these uh, receiving electrodes, knowing that they are divided into sub-electrodes in order to uh, provide information on the left, right, uh, top, and down uh, currents that flow across them. So, uh, in order to, to play with these uh, sensors, we have also developed along uh, national and European projects uh, experimental apparatus. So what you can see here is we have two tanks, one with uh, uh, tap water, the other with salt water, and this is the smaller one with tap water. So it's a cube uh, uh, on the top of which is fixed a gantry, a Cartesian robot that can move uh, through a stick, uh, a, a road, at the, the tip of which is fixed the, the, the sensor. And so you can motion control the, 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 this, uh, this probe in this uh, cubic tank and uh, with electric feedback. And so we can test uh, navigation, uh, shape recognition algorithms, and so on. So, so just to now to come back to the principle uh, and uh, connect it with the, our uh, sensor. So here, what you can see is the most simple uh, sensor uh, that we can build. So it has uh, three electrodes. One is in the tail, this is the emitter, and there are two in the head, left, right, which allows to give the, the, the sensor a kind of electric binocular uh, vision. And so uh, we set this, uh, this two electrodes in under voltage with respect to the tail, and we measure the currents that flow into across the, the left and the right electrodes. It's the currents I1 and I2. And what we discovered that in fact the, the, there is better there is good combination of these uh, measurements, which consists in taking uh, the left plus the right. This is what we name the actual currents, and we remove from them the basal component. That means the the, 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 the currents that are, that are measured when there is no object in, in around the sensor. So in this case, that means that the the sensor just measure the, the perturbative uh, component of the additional objects around, uh, around them. And also there is another component, which is the lateral uh, 
component, which is the, simply the difference between the left and the right. And so, remarkably, this, uh, these two uh, components of the measurements can segregate the information. In fact, what we have learned is that the actual component contains the information, contains the information about the electric nature of the object, if it's an isolant or a conductive object, and also the distance from the object to the axis of the probe. And the lateral one, it uh, uh, informs the sensor about the orientation of the object with respect to this, uh, the axis of, of the probe. Okay, so now you can see the, the basic principle of the, the electric sense, which is uh, so uh, recovered with this uh, technology. So first, the sensor emits a basal field, uh, the, 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 the field, uh, what we name E0, in the scene. And so since there is an object around it, the object is polarized. This generates an induced electric dipole that reflects, that re emits a secondary reflected field. This is the perturbative field. And these two uh, currents, delta E ax here, delta I ax and I, I lat, uh, are an image of this uh, secondary uh, field that we can exploit to control, uh, to navigate. So based on these uh, uh, concepts, we addressed uh, several issues in underwater robotics as navigation, object electrolocation, object recognition, teleoperation, communication, and, and uh, in future, we want to address the difficult problem of space mapping. And we know that electric fish can in fact navigate along uh, big distance and build maps, and we don't know even biologists how they do. So I will start to illustrate this by underwater navigation. So these are uh, results uh, generated in, in a project, a open project. The aims of the project were, the aim of the project was to build an anguille form robot that can uh, reconfigure reconfigurates its morphology. It's a set of modules with propellers that can connect together and detach. And each of the module is equipped with electrodes, you see, and so with electric sense in order to navigate autonomously in its environment. So first, uh, it was the objective of this project, and just to say that uh, if uh, we could solve an inverse problem. We could completely solve navigation with no difficulty. So I will introduce now this inverse problem. It's a mathematical problem. Physically, the problem is the following. You have uh, insulating uh, boundary and you feel of water. You have a probe, so an uh, active electric uh, sensor or robot. And around, you have uh, conductive and isolating object and even uh, other props, other robots, which are passive. So they just listen the electric field around them. And so in this case, mathematically, if you, the, the, enfin, physically the problem consists in, you apply a, a voltage on this active prop, you measure the currents that flow back across the electrode, and from this knowledge, from this measurement, you have to reconstruct all the same, the geometry and the electric properties. So mathematically, you can state this problem as following. Huh? This is a set of partial differential equation. Phi is the potential, the electric potential in the scene. Grad de phi is uh, electric, the electric field. And gamma is the field of uh, conductivity in the scene. So this equation is just the conservation of currents. And the problem is to find in any point of the scene the value of the conductivity, uh, knowing uh, the voltage that you impose to your sensor and the currents that you measure uh, and that flow back across the electrodes. So this inverse problem, which consists in, fine, in fact, in fact the, the, a map of the conductivity, 
is what we name an impedance tomography problem. There exists a huge uh, uh, amount of results uh, from, uh, for instance, medical uh, engineer, engineering community to address this kind of problem. But in fact, they are very costly to be used online. So it's not the good solution for real-time control. And so in order to overcome this difficulty, what we developed is uh, a reactive model-free approach, which is based on by inspiration and the concept of uh, embodied intelligence. The idea is to exploit the synergy between perception and action through the morphology. In particular, if it's very usual, usual in classical robotics to use perception for action, we also use action in order to improve the perception, as do the animals, in fact. To uh, in, uh, encore this idea into our problem, we uh, also did some experiments with uh, the fish. So here what you see, uh, it's the, the results of uh, ethological experiments, which consist in placing a fish, an electric fish, uh, a real electric fish in a tank. And at the middle of the tank, there is a dipole, an uh, artificial dipole that is a switch off at the beginning of the experiment. And uh, at a given time, we switch on the, uh, the dipole and this generates in the tank these uh, electric lines. And here what you see, uh, the plots, from the, 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 the spots here, it, this, these are the trajectories of the fish. In fact, when the, the, the dipole is switched on, the fish interpret uh, the, the, the electric field as the presence of an intruder, and he, he wants to chase it away. So he wants to attack it. Uh, they are very territorial. And so what they do, in fact, what we observe is that the fish, of course, doesn't go in straight line. He follows the electric lines that uh, uh, steer it uh, toward the, the source of the electric field, which is this dipole. So in fact, the, the idea is that the fish reacts to the electric lines of the, uh, the electric field around it. So this is this idea that we have exploited, but in the case of active electric sense, that means in this case, the electric lines are uh, generated by the secondary electric field uh, uh, produced by the basal field of the, of the sensor. And here you can see uh, a very simple law that allows to uh, seek a conductive object. So this law is very simple and it's simply that the steering is a proportional uh, control to, with respect to the lateral currents. That means that the, you steer uh, the, the, the probe in order that the lateral currents are zero. And so that means that you align lateral, it's left minus right, if you remember. So that means that it will ensure the, the probe to align with the electric lines. And then you go forward with a constant velocity. And depending on the, this gain here, you can encode uh, simple uh, behaviors like, for instance, avoid insulating object and seek conductive ones or the opposite. Now, uh, of course, it's the basic, uh, it's the, the, the most simple reactive law for navigation, but we elaborated more complex one. Here, what you can see is some experiments in the, um, European project uh, which aimed at uh, equipping uh, a swarm of robots with electric sense in order to uh, allow them to navigate together and also to communicate. So there were two types of robots, these robots and this mobile one, and they have to exchange uh, messages based on electric sense. So here the law that you see is the most uh, complex one used in this project. There is always this lateral components which allow the fish to slalom between obstacles. 
and to find the robots and others that allow to go backward and forward uh, and also to stop at a given distance with respect to this robot with which they exchange messages. Another issue is object identification. And we saw that the fish can uh, uh, recognize objects, so we also address this issue and we consider the most simple shapes, uh, shaped object af after sph spherical ones, which are in fact prolet ellipsoidal objects. So taking inspiration from biology, we proceed, alors, just to say again that in the mathematical, uh, from the mathematical point of view, to address this issue is not, is not an easy task. Uh, we can uh, localize uh, the object, but the, the shape, it's not an easy task. So what we did is uh, we took inspiration again from biology and we proceeded in two steps. The first step is a localization uh, step. And in fact, uh, we have replaced it by uh, uh, a reactive alignment and positioning of the, the, the robot with respect to the object. That means that it's not a static localization of the object, but the, the, the robot actively po self positioned its body with respect to the to the to the object based just on the measurement of the currents with no model of the object that that means that this first step works independently of the size and the shape and the electric nature of the object and then the second step uh, once we we are uh, positioned relatively to the object that means that we know the exact localization of the object with respect to uh, the sensor of the body, and then we can achieve a stereotypic, stereotyped trajectory and uh, make run a shape recognition uh, algorithm based on the standard model. Okay, so here you see this uh, step of uh, self alignment. So, the, in fact, we exploit the relative symmetries of the sensor and, and the object. And there is also the same uh, results in experiments. Just to say also that uh, the symmetry of the object is not necessary because in fact, uh, the, the, the response, the electric response of an object is a kind of, is a, what we name a multipolar expansion like a Fourier, uh, uh, expansion uh, with harmonics and we know that the leading order of this response is that of an equivalent ellipsoid that means that uh, for any shaped object uh, there is a hidden uh, ellipsoid behind it and uh, in fact we can uh, achieve this kind of self alignment uh, even for not ellipsoidal objects Okay, once we have, uh, once, once we know the localization of the object with respect to the probe, we can uh, use uh, standard uh, uh, estimation online technique like Kalman filtering. And here what we see, you see it's the experimental results of the uh, estimation of such an ellipsoidal object based on the uh, leading order uh, response, electric response of the object, which is a second uh, order tensor. Uh, this problem has been studied uh, in mathematics by the, the group of Amari. Now we also applied uh, this uh, sense to under uh, water teleoperation. So that means that in this case, we exploited the haptic modality of electric sense. And uh, as I told you at the beginning, electric sense can be seen as a kind of pre-touch sense. Huh? That means that the electric field around the sensor is used as an electric invisible body. And if you, uh, with simple reactive control law, you can uh, emulate a kind of uh, elastic body 
around the sensor. This is what we, you can see here. So when the probe approach the wall, which is insulating, that compress the electric field uh, around the, the sensor. And this electric field is fed back to the joystick. And if the operator takes the joystick, he uh, feels uh, a kind of elasticity which represent this, uh, fin, this, uh, this stiffness of the electric field. And the, the, the gains of the, the, re the reactive controls are finally an image of this virtual stiffness. So the last, uh, the last uh, topic that we, we have uh, studied, it's in the context of this uh, project, Subcultron, that just finished this year. So, as I just said before, the idea was to equip a swarm of underwater robots in salty waters, and in fact, for in the Laguna of uh, Venice, in order that they uh, communicate together with electric sense. So, the Laguna of Venice is ideally adapted to electric sense since uh, water are very dark, murky and uh, and there are many obstacles, so it was a good, uh, a, a good uh, exercise. Uh, okay. Uh, so in this case, the idea that is that we don't have only one robot, but many robots together. So we have to uh, fulfill some basic constraints. Uh, first, uh, remember that the, what we exploited is to before is the amplitude of the electric currents, which are uh, used for reactive navigation, as the, the, the case we I just presented. And uh, now, when you have two robots, the issue is that uh, if they are active at the same time, the signals are mixed. Uh, together and unexploitable for navigation, uh, for the amplitude cannot be can be, cannot be exploited, and also for communication uh, because the idea, the aim, the final goal was to achieve this communication. So what we did is to preserve the usability of signals in the multi-robot uh, context. First, we use the frequency of signals. Uh, for communication with the FSK protocol, very standard. And so we preserve the, 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 use, the use of amplitude for reactive navigations. And also, we needed to develop a jamming avoidance algorithms, ensuring that only one robot, including itself, can be active in the range of any robot. So to that end, there were two uh, possibilities to use a centralized approach with a absolute, uh, absolute clock uh, for each robot, but it's horrible. What we did, uh, it's uh, take inspiration from uh, uh, five flies that can uh, synchronize their, their blinking. And we uh, use the same story, but for desynchronization, of the electric uh, uh, activity of this uh, multi-robot uh, swarm. So here you see very uh, first results uh, showing more complex scenario, but it's just so uh, uh, one uh, robot that aggregates with this other robot. Uh, which is fixed, and the exchange. Uh, so sorry for the music, and they exchange. Uh, so they aggregate, and then they exchange a message. Uh, so the the must the this robot send a message to the uh, mobile run run one and reciprocally, uh, it uh, we send the same message, and when it's achieved, they they separate. And so we have uh, more complex scenarios with several uh, robots moving uh, in a complex scene and uh, obstacles and so on. So they have to avoid obstacles, aggregate together, communicate, 
and so on. So it's the end. And if you have any questions, thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Boyer, for, for this interesting presentation. Yeah. Is there any question from the from the audience? Uh, well, there is hi, there is one in Slack, but uh, thank you for an interesting talk. I really like the idea of navigating in water with a force feedback joystick. Could you please say some words about the shape of the wave signal uh, of your wave generator of your wave generator you emit introduced in slide <coughs> seven? Is it pure sinusoidal, sinusoidal, a specific frequency, or something more fancy? Sorry, 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 sorry. I, 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 so it's in, <coughs> it's in the box with the. Uh, I'm afraid yeah, it is on the Slack. Uh, you don't have the question, but um, the question is uh, about the the emission of the signal. The signal is purely sinusoidal. Ah, okay. Just a sine wave. Uh, we emit just a sine wave uh, for. Uh, yeah. For our test. In fact, there are two types of fish. Huh? Some of them. Uh, emit pulses uh, with the high frequency content. So in, in a way, they do a kind of uh, spectral anal analysis of the object. And they are wave fishes. And uh, we took inspiration from wave fishes. It's more easy uh, technologically to, to... So we use the constant uh, frequency of our wave generator uh yeah what 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 we did uh, well i i didn't say that uh, the last experiments with uh, uh several robots communicating together it's it's they have been achieved in salt water huh? and it was not easy it was a challenge to to shift from tap water to salt water because of course the conductivity of salt water is uh much higher and so we, we had to also uh, uh, revise electronics and so on, what uh, Vincent did. So I don't know if it answers the question. I think, I think it does. There is another question. Have you published any uh, data set? <laughs> no. we, yeah. we, have, we have several papers for each of these results we have papers but data sets uh, not really huh? but we but we could if people are interested uh, in uh, exploiting your uh, fin, this, our data to to fin, for instance uh, we, we have a data, a data set on uh, for shape recognition and uh, we could use it in order to to uh, address this issue with other strategy not based on models, for instance, with uh, deep learning and so on. So uh, we, 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 we could uh, help people to... Vincent, do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. So probably the best is whoever is interested, they uh, should contact you and... Uh. Yeah. yeah. But if such a... If people are interested, we, we, we will do an effort to, to, to provide this data set to the community. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have a question which is related to one of the videos you showed, like when the, the electric fish aligns with the um, uh, elliptic object. Yeah. Can you align the fish with, in any direction or is there uh, a preferred direction which the fish well. always goes to? Yeah, uh, we, I, I, uh, maybe we can. Uh, for, for what, what we uh, here finally, it's very, it's very simple. Huh, to the idea is to uh, annulate the lateral currents. So, in this case, you are sure that you are aligned with one of the axes of symmetry of the the ellipse. Uh, yeah, but that, does it work for the two axes or only for one? Ah, it works. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, interesting. The, in fact, the small axis, the low is stable, and the uh, major axis, the low is unstable. So that means they, they, they are all uh, uh, equilibrium. So, 
there are equilibrium points, but one is stable and one is unstable. Yeah. Sorry? There are two equilibrium points which correspond yeah. to the axis, but one is stable and the other one is yeah. unstable. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, thank you. Thanks.